Hey everyone, this is Elias from RevMatch Media. Yes, we do have another Jeep to review, but this one is gonna be different than the other one we did. In fact, a lot different. So let's take a look at the 2020 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sahara 4x4. Let's get started. Getting started in the front, Again, we have the iconic Jeep front, um, but we have the, the added lighting LED package um, for the fog lights and for the daytime running lights. And these guys just look unbelievable. Definitely the way to go when you're dealing with, uh, you know, your lighting packages on a Jeep. Uh, we have your typical tow, tow points here. Um, nice big front bumper. Uh, and we have this gray color. It's, it's great. Um, so the funny thing is in the other video, I said, if you're gonna get a Jeep, get it in a nice loud color because it's a Jeep. It's a lot of fun. It's really cool. But I'm gonna bite my tongue on that one because this Jeep looks really good in this color. And that's what this whole Jeep is about. Especially this, this specific Sahara is, it's really like a sheep in cashmere. And this cashmere is a nice gray color, um, but it's it's definitely gonna have uh, you know some refinements to it, but also have that kind of wolf kind of uh, aspect to it, um, or just mean attitude to it. Uh, but yeah, I I really dig the color. I think it looks really well. And again, with the nice front color grill um, and the LED package, it's definitely the way to go up front. This is my favorite part about this Jeep, and that is the 3.0 Eco Diesel engine. Yes, this is a diesel engine, and it's not a typical diesel. So it's not a typical diesel in the sense of you're hearing the typical diesel noise, the clanking. Uh, you can still hear it if you really floor it, but it's a very refined engine. It's, it's not moving the, 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 you know, the bigger engine is not moving the whole cabin while you're at idle. It's just quiet. It's very well thought out engine. So we have the 3.0 diesel, turbocharged diesel, and we are dealing with 260 horsepower, 442 pound feet of torque. That's a lot of torque. And I can tell you that getting the power down is very easy. Uh, even though it's a lot of torque, uh, the drivetrain for this does a very good job. And that's because it's connected to the eight speed automatic um, that has been tuned for this. And it works really well. This is probably, uh, again, one of my favorite things because it does, it just does such a good job at not just, you know, delivering power but getting it down uh, as well again it's not super noisy so it still has its you know it still has its its diesel char characteristic though it you can still hear it slightly but it's not a super loud sound at that uh it is a little cramped in here compared to maybe the 2.0 that i drove last time and i granted i loved the 2.0 but i loved this even more which is incredible to say, because that 2.0 was very, very good. Um, gas mileage in this has been incredible, uh, you know, well, relative to a Jeep, because again, a big box, not the most aerodynamic, but it can really, uh, this engine has really done well with, with the fuel economy. And, uh, you know, I would say if you can, if you have the option, you know, just look for a nearby, you know, nearby your house, there are tons of apps that will let you know if there's diesel around you. Uh, if you can, this is the powertrain you want to get. Until literally yesterday, Jeep went ahead and, and announced that they will be putting in the V8 Hemi from Dodge into this. So we're going down to 440 horse, uh, 430 torque, I believe, or 440 torque. But that horsepower number is really going through the roof 
uh, at 400 and so about 440 uh, horsepower as well. Um, naturally aspirated as well. So we know the instant uh, power delivery. Uh, I believe it's the same engine in the uh, Dodge Charger and Challenger, the 392, um, which we loved the way that that sound. So we're excited to see how that sounds in a Jeep. Uh, are they going to make it quieter or are they just gonna open it up just like they do with the, with the Dodge Charger and Challenger? But either way, for what we have now in this, it's definitely an awesome choice. Uh, I recommend this over the 2.0 any day. Even if you don't have diesel near you, find it somehow. You'll have the range to go get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's go ahead and move over to the wheels. Coming down to the wheel and tire package, we have this 18 inch wheel. Uh, it is wrapped on this 255-70 Bridgestone uh, tire. Um, I really, really like these. These have been incredible for everyday use. Uh, they're extremely quiet. They have no vibrations like maybe the other Jeep did. Uh, I'm not being tossed and turned, uh, you know, kind of sideways and having to fight the wheel a lot. So this this package works really well with this jeep i was really surprised and you still have the grip because even when we're when we have the 442 pound feet of torque trying to get these wheels to break loose it's not gonna happen you know it it really puts the power down and works really well with the drivetrain to really get the power where it needs to and that's down to the ground another thing i want to mention is our little easter eggs uh, so jeep likes to implement a lot of easter eggs and we have a nice little jeep uh, logo right on the wheel there when we look at the side again it's unmistakably jeep <laughs> i mean it's you can tell it's jeep uh, one thing that kind of sets this a little bit different is the colored fenders so the colored fender uh, covers uh, is a nice touch. So this is gonna be a little bit more on the, um, I hate to say it, but more of a mall crawler kind of thing where it's a more refined, but don't be fooled with this trail rated badge here. It's still definitely very capable of off-roading. Uh, that's why I, I like to say, this is like a sheep in cashmere um, because it does look nice. You know, it's got its nice look to it. It's got a more kind of that, pristine or more more luxurious I guess you could say or, or just what you would typically see um, in a more luxury car where you get you know instead of getting like a more of the plastic um, even though they are still uh, but you know just that kind of black it's a more body colored option so to see that is nice again we have the nice Sahara badge um, but again don't be fooled by this little guy it's still very capable Let's go ahead and head to the back and see what we got back there. Now, the back is, again, it's a Jeep. So we have this nice big square shape, which we all have loved from our childhood. Um, but there's a couple of things that I wanna point out. First off is this nice Eco Diesel badge. So this little guy is gonna tell us there's a little bit more to this Jeep than just having, you know, uh, a, a, a typical engine in it. So that guy is awesome to have and again it's it's really gonna make a difference uh, the other thing I want to point out is you see that it has wireless entry so I can go ahead or or a keyless entry I'm able to go ahead and open up the bottom with having my key in the pocket open up and there's tons of space back here this is probably one of my favorite things about the Jeep is we have usable space. It's not like other SUVs or CUVs where you're dealing with, yeah, you can carry seven or eight people, but you got the luggage for one. It's practically useless at that point. And now you're dealing with having to put seats down and what's the purpose of, of doing that if, you know, 
if you're saying that this is for seven or eight people. So again, seat five, but it really has the space for five people as well, for five people's worth of luggage. So that's one of my favorite things about this. And that's even with the fact that you have the nice big Alpine subwoofer in the back that really can hit hard in those low notes. So again, it's nice and big. And yeah, if you just wanna sit down, take a nice little break after some mall crawling or some actual rock crawling, rock crawling, uh, you have this nice little area here to sit down and relax. Let's head inside and take a look at some other fun stuff inside. I wanna show you why I like this Jeep or this, at least this configuration more than I did the Rubicon. So this is a little bit more refined, which we'll, we'll discuss in a bit. Um, but let me show you how I can literally literally make this a Jeep. Make this a Jeep in just a matter of a button. So I can get that Jeep experience, but I don't have to worry about getting out and having to really, you know, fight the elements sometimes and take off that panel. So this has an electric retractable roof. And again, just a matter of pushing that little button and you can see it. And I'm back to an everyday use for it. And let me just say that alone is definitely worth the money. The retractable roof is a huge, huge bonus. And again, I'm not a, you know, this is the second Jeep that I drive um, and I've only driven them for about a week, but I like this more. Well, some say it's not a Jeep, not a true Jeep because of it. Sure, but let them say what they want to say while they get wet and have to force to have to take panels off, take up your trunk space. That is the other thing, taking up space in the back so that you can put those things away. Not in this case, because all I gotta do is open up, press that little button, open up and let it, you know, open. It's really bright today, uh, which is probably, as you can see, it's hot. Um, which is another thing, if it's a little too hot, even with running the AC, again, just a matter of closing it and not have to worry about getting outside where it's really hot and closing it. And again, highly would recommend this. As a first Jeep, first time Jeep owner, if you're looking at one, you wanna experience this first. Um, don't go through the struggles of having the panels. Get this first. Did I say get this first because yeah. Also, the good thing about this is this is actually insulating a lot more than the panels did. The panels just let all the hot air come in and, uh, you know, it was always, always difficult. And granted, we got it in cooler weather, but it was easier for us to uh, really, um, you know, deal with this, especially today where we're going to reach triple digits. This will keep the car fairly cool. Um, relative to obviously the material it has uh, compared to just having hard panels up there with very to little insulation, or at least it feels that way. So let's go out for a drive. Coming in and going for a drive in the Jeep in just everyday conditions, you can see why I said this Jeep is like a wolf in cashmere <laughs> you know, in cashmere's clothing, so to speak. And it's, it still has its growl. It still has its, you know, uh, Jeep kind of ruggedness to it, but it's more refined. So the interior 
uh, it's gonna be very similar. Um, one thing that I did like, I do love, is the fact that we no longer have like the red uh, kind of anodized look to it. I do like this black, like it's like a hard leathery kind of plastic uh, feel to it. Uh, I, I, I feel it's a better finish because the other the other one that we drove um, that had the anodized red but the jeep was yellow so with the jeep being yellow it just uh, reminded me too much of ketchup and mustard so to speak but you know coming in here and seeing this this is definitely a, a nice change to it uh your steering wheel is the same typical uh fca configuration with the back buttons um that are just awesome you know you can change your station on the left in the back you can change the the volume on the or actually next track and you can change the volume on the right side so that's still there which is always welcome whenever i get a fca car i am excited because it just the wheel ergonomics is just so dead on it's 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 perfect it's what you need these back buttons for um, so again we come over to the kind of gauge clusters very similar to the other one um, you know we have the dials in the middle that are just going to give you your information your typical you know speedometer you have your vehicle info for your um, for your psi on your on your tires your air pressure uh, you know your your coolant temperature trans trans temperature oil oil pressure things like that um, so you have that stuff there we don't have a lot of the off-road capabilities that the other one had so this one when we start getting to the kind of drivetrain to things uh, we still do have the the option to going from from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive and we have different modes for that down here which is nice um, but we are missing the sway bar so the you know when we can lock the differentials we can disconnect the sway bar so more of the off-road things but it doesn't mean that it's not capable because it really is it's a trail rated uh jeep which means you can really take it out um will will you take it out in the most treacherous of off-road conditions maybe not you know you want to reserve a little bit more to to the um uh to the other models with that with those options um but with this again this is like a a sheep in cashmere clothing it's it's a it's more refined it's definitely a lot more refined um which i think for an everyday use works very well you know we have the entertainment system which is the the uconnect 4 uh the new uconnect 5 has been announced so with the new uconnect out it's it's got a lot more features and it, i'm excited for that i'm excited to see that in the in the jeep because it's definitely a huge upgrade from this not saying this is bad but it's going to be a way better configuration as well uh, you have your your knobs your typical uh, ac knobs down here uh, and down here is where it changes a little bit so we don't have those uh, like i said anti you know sway bar disconnects we don't have the uh, differential locking options we have a 12 volt adapter um, and over here on the right side we don't have the auxes which in my other video i thought it was me being an audio guy i thought it was just having more auxes as far as like you know more audio connections but in reality it is a switch system for you to put accessories it's already pre-done for you which is great again more if you're going on the off-road side of things which is great because you'll have the option of just plugging in accessories in in the engine compartment and being able to switch those on from right in here very plug and play great function but again if this is an everyday use and you're not one for needing those accessories we have a media port we have for USB-C so we do have the USB-C so we are going a little bit ahead so that's nice to see that future but we don't take away the USB-A which is very important we've driven you know another vehicle that only had USB-C which is great we're ready for the future you know but the future isn't here now. There's still tons and tons of USB-A and having to have another adapter, you know, it, it's it, it's cumbersome. Now we come down here and we have the shifter for the eight speed automatic. <laughs> yeah, this thing has eight speeds. And 
it has been, you know, set up to handle the 442 pound-feet of torque that this diesel engine cranks out at 260, I believe, horsepower. Um, but it's it's very well done. It's <laughs> you know when you hammer it down, it really goes. Like it, I, I'm you know you really feel the torque on this, and that's all I've been telling my friends is this engine is so awesome. It's it has a low end grunt. Uh, you don't feel the turbo lag of of you know the the diesel you know the turbo configuration in this. You don't feel the turbo lag. The power is really on there. Uh, it's ready. You know the transmission shifts really well. It shifts when it when it needs. So there's a slight delay, but it's expected. We don't want to just especially when you're. I mean you're going from the highest to possibly the lowest, so it's not too bad. Um, but it is really well done. The configuration, I love this engine more than the 2.0 turbo. And I loved that engine. That little thing was powerful. That little thing surprised me. I thought I had a V6 under there. That's how powerful, smooth, and linear that engine was. But this is better. So if you have the money, if you have the money to option out your Jeep to, to get you know the extra package with the diesel get it get it because i i definitely think it's worth it and this week you know with it being a diesel i was worried about oh, okay you know we're gonna have to um you know if we really run the the miles on this and we have to fill up i have to find a a diesel station not a problem at least in my area so that's something definitely you want to plan out uh, at least in my area we had two gas stations and we're actually fairly cheap. It's I think at 219 right now, um, so it's not bad. It's not bad. And considering that you know with this, you're looking at 25 uh, combined, 22 city, and 29 highway, which is good for for a Jeep, uh, which which is really good for a Jeep actually, um, because you know it's it, they can be a little bit on the gas guzzling side. Uh, with now we're getting about 19 because we have been doing a little bit of mixed driving and our foot's been a little bit heavier because feeling the torque it's so much fun it is so much fun and at that much power you can really feel it you can really feel this this guy move you know just coming more to the differences between this one and the other Wrangler that we that we drove uh, the Rubicon um, I like this one. So I, I feel like this is a more everyday use Jeep. And if you're not going to be going off-roading, if you're not going to be really, and I mean, even then you can still go off-roading on this, but if you're not really going to take it to the limit, um, this is really what you want to get. The Sahara has been really practical, a practical Jeep and, and refined, refined is the difference as well. So the engine, uh, when I'm talking about refinement is the engine isn't really that loud it's not your typical loud guzzling diesel it's smooth in the sense of you're not feeling the engine just moving along or chugging along in there like some other diesel engines you've experienced uh, and it's quiet so it's dampered and you know you just it, it's definitely more refined than a typical loud you know diesel and this one has the electric roof so this has an electric roof that obviously when you open it up it's a lot easier to handle than if you are having to take panels out and then put panels back in so it's it's easier to manage it's better everyday use is it is it a jeep because it has an electrical roof some may say not but i say yes because you still are getting the jeep experience uh, so I was able to, you know, when we were on a drive, we opened it up and we were able to experience the outside, but it started getting a little too hot. It's getting in the triple digits here in Austin. So I said, no problem. Just go ahead and close it with one little finger touch and it closes it up. And that's it. That's what we're talking about refinement. It's easier for everyday use and not just having that. But again, you can see some more refinements where simple things like the um, the buttons for your home, for your home door garage, 
Uh, little things like that, you know, having it built in are really going to set this one apart with being a more, I almost want to say luxurious, uh, kind of there getting into like the Jeep Grand Cherokee kind of thing. Um, you know, the, le the leather seats feel great. Um, the materials feel better I, or, or the finishes are better in my in my opinion with with this just this alone uh, don't worry that's not my diesel engine that's a that's a Dodge Ram diesel engine next to me uh, if you guys can hear that um, but it's it's also the the suspension feels different it feels better it feels like I hate to say it but it's not a it's not a it's not an insult, but it's more of a mall crawler. And it's perfectly fine to say that for this because it it feels smooth on the highway. Man, you could really get this, this guy really up there really quickly and it rides smooth. It is quieter too. It is quieter than the Jeep Rubicon that has the um, uh, panels that you have to remove yourself. So it's definitely a lot quieter and this, appears to dampen some of that because I can put my hand on it and I can feel that the that the roof is definitely getting some vibration so I'm sure it's absorbing some of that noise the other thing as well is the heat with the Jeep I felt like I was in a tin can which technically you are um, but I didn't feel like any insulation between the the top and the outside or very little with this you definitely feel it there's a lot more insulation or at least it feels like so that when you get in it's not a scorching hot tin can it is very well uh insulated and it keeps the the heat out and very easy to again just you know go ahead and turn on your ac and it cools it down a lot faster than if you had to deal with the other you know the rubicon with the hard panels on the top going to the back with my kids seat it was a little difficult i i don't recall how um how i did it on the other jeep so i'll have to look back on the video but i had to put them in the middle um on the sides it was a little difficult um because of the way that uh, again if you guys have seen my reviews uh his seat kind of reclines a little bit more than than your typical seats um so you do when you get when we have back seats that are a little bit more vertical it can be a little tough to put them in uh put the seat in but we got him in um he has his vents down there uh, a lot of space in the back jeeps you know with the with the back seats are pretty comfortable um there so there's really not much of a of a problem then you're dealing with the trunk area there's plenty of space as you guys saw uh with all my equipment there and it lets you you know have enough space for whatever you need to do so it's it's plenty of a space for you know your everyday use and if you're going on a long road trip uh, you know you have that space there it, it's it's amazing how you can have the same exact model but it be completely two different um kind of animals so to speak like yeah i mean you could really punch it and get it going but what i mean is between this and the rubicon between the sahara and the rubicon there's a huge difference so it's it's great to have that because now you're dealing with uh you know is a jeep good for me yes you now have that answer that a jeep is good it's you know a jeep fits your lifestyle does this one fit your lifestyle more maybe not maybe so does the rubicon fit your lifestyle maybe not maybe so but that's that's the point you'll have a configuration that would work for you for me i don't you know i i did enjoy going off road off roading um i don't see myself doing it all the time i don't see myself needing to do it all the time where i live so to me i would say this is going to be a better deal for me so this is going to be a better deal because again it's easier to maneuver also with with um with this one and and the differentials that it has the gearing my wife said it, it's actually easier to to park she felt it was easier to to you know manage the wheel as opposed to the axle and the other one that she felt 
something weird, which is just, again, the, the differential just kind of acting up, not acting up, but it, it's doing its job, you know, especially at low speeds. Um, but she liked this one more. And I like this one more as well because I felt, again, it was a more practical, more refined. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm getting old, um, but it still has those quirks. It still has those Jeep quirks that we all love. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think this is the better option for me. So let's do some driving with the top down. Uh, but again, this, this is unbelievable just having this open air like that and not having to you know not having to have gotten out of the car or out of the jeep and start taking panels off making a team effort yeah sometimes that's fun but not when it's raining and you're realizing oh boy we are going to get soaked granted it is a little bit noisier in here i don't know if you guys can hear me but it's pretty fun. I mean, maybe if I lower the... No, that's just making it louder. Yeah, it, it can be pretty loud. I mean, it's a Jeep. It's, you're not... Again, it, it is gonna have some, you know, it's Jeep things where, yeah, that was, they can get pretty loud, but it's still a lot of fun. It's still a lot of fun. And, you know, you just put the top down or pull, pull the top back and blast some music. Now with this Alpine, the premium system that this has, the Alpine speaker with the subwoofer in the back, it is loud, it is loud, just like we had it in the Rubicon. It is loud, it is clear, it does the job. Um, you know, it's definitely a concert, a, a, you know, a concert in your car. Um, so definitely approve of, of this system. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed my review and I hope you guys can find a Jeep for you um, because I have, I think this is definitely the Jeep for me um, because of everything that I mentioned. Uh, I like this one a little bit, just a little bit more than the Rubicon. Well, again, I hope you enjoyed the review and remember, find the right gear.